this is about dental implant occlusion and uh, we have no evidence base uh, a correct or uh, accurate about the uh, dental implant occlusion uh, the main difference between the tooth and the implant is the difference between the periodontal ligament so the implant has no periodontal ligament has no some flexibility uh, while the tooth or the teeth has the uh, periodontal ligament would give some flexibility on the um, movement of in in, in the bone the force uh, of mastication uh, in compared with the implant that mean the tooth can intrude in the bone in about 25 to 100 micron when the force applied on the tooth while the implant can intrude you intrude uh, about a three to five micron only so this is the difference because the uh, implant is functional ankylosed functional ankylosed in the bone while the uh, tooth is um, connected to the bone by the uh, periodontal ligament so the difference is in general the connection first as i see uh, as I say, the periodontal ligament in the tooth while the implant is osteointegrated or for functional ankylosis. The proper receptive uh, in the tooth, we have the proper periodontal uh, mechanoreceptor, while in the implant, we haven't any uh, reception. Uh, tactile sensation of tactile uh, sensitivity is high in the tooth, is low. The axial mobility, as I uh, said before, here is 25 to 100 micron while in the implant is three to five milli, uh, micron the fulcrum of uh, lateral force uh, in the tooth is in the apical third of the root while in the implant is in the crystal bone also the load bearing characteristics uh, the implant uh, the tooth has a shock absorbent function and stress distribution in the tooth can we uh, have a stress distribution um, also because of the periodontal ligament, while on the uh, implant, we has no stress uh, distribution, we has a stress uh, constriction. Uh, the constriction of the force is only uh, in the uh, crystal bone of the implant, that supported the implant on the crystal bone. The sign of overloading also uh, in the tooth, we have uh, a mobility, periodontal ligament thickening, uh, and wearing of the enamel and uh, maybe get a pain while in the implant first we haven't any pain so the implant uh, can get sequel loosening or a fracture of the abutment a fracture of the prosthesis uh, or we have uh, some time bone loss implant lack of periodontal receptor uh, and are more susceptible to occlusal overloading because uh, first of all, uh, I, as I say, the lack of uh, shearing ability and the adaptation of the occlusal force and reduce, and reduce the mechanoreceptor. So this is the uh, difference between the tooth and uh, the implant uh, is uh, give the implant more susceptible to the overloading force than the tooth. The principle of the implant occlusion. Uh, in, in the implant occlusion, we can uh, get bilateral stability and centric occlusion, uh, even distribution of occlusal contact and force, no uh, interference between intrude position and centric. So uh, in, in centric uh, position, we have uh, no uh, contact between the, uh, the implants. And the occlusal table, which mean the, the uh, the width of the occlusal uh, surface of the implant must be narrower than the normal teeth. So in, in this, uh, the, the, uh, this point, uh, the last point, I mean the decrease the uh, occlusal table. That is mean uh, to decrease the uh, lateral force or uh, the concentration of lateral force uh, on the implant. Uh, why the freedom in the centric? It's about one to one point five uh, freedom in occlusion in centric occlusion, and anterior guidance whenever possible. Uh, 
and uh, smooth, uh, even, and lateral uh, exclusive movement, working, non-working interference, uh, we, we mean that the uh, force must be uh, decreased in the... Uh, uh, ...force as much as best posterior impact crown in a cross bite if necessary. That means if we have uh, no, uh, no another uh, treatment uh, uh, by the lateral force, we can put it in uh, cross bite to make it uh, a crown to uh, cusp to cusp contact, not cusp to force contact because this is the decrease the lateral force much more. But it's for special cases, not all the cases. In uh, the principle of the occlusion in full arch uh, fixed prosthesis, we have uh, bilateral balanced occlusion if we have no lateral force, and we can uh, do it uh, splinting of the implant. Uh, more than one implant is uh, connected to, in, in a single uh, prosthesis to uh, distribute the force uh, in, in uh, more than one implant. And uh, no working and balancing uh, contact on cantilever. Whenever you can decrease the cantilever, it is better. In general, uh, I'm talking in generally, uh, whenever you can decrease or uh, minimize the cantilever in processes, it is better. Uh, if we have uh, a cantilever, it must be in occlusion. It must be uh, less than uh, 100 micron. Uh, from the another implant or from the pointing of the uh, implant. Uh, freedom in centric, it must be one to 1.5 millimeter. That's mean in centric, it's uh, away from the occlusion, no contact, no uh, contact in, in, in function and balancing in centric occlusion. It must be a freedom. Bilateral uh, balanced occlusion used uh, in, uh, in uh, sorry, in other denture, we have uh, a two type of uh, occlusion. Uh, either the monoplane occlusion, uh, which is uh, severely, uh, if we have severely one uh, result, and bilateral balanced occlusion can be done if we have uh, a normal uh, occlusion and uh, a good uh, bone quality. So, uh, again, we have uh, another uh, discussion to this point with uh, uh, posterior fixed processes that in, in full arch here in posterior fixed processes, we, uh, we prefer to make the, the first uh, force uh, applied on the anterior contact, or uh, I mean the natural teeth, not on the implant. And uh, the, uh, the implant will be in contact after a heavy force. In a light force, it must be in only on the teeth, which is anteriorly. And also, as I said, we have to uh, group function of the uh, processes to distribute the force uh, on more than one implant. And uh, number occlusal table uh, with a flat cusp. That's, uh, I explained it before. Cross bite posteriorly if necessary. Also, we have uh, some time of uh, lateral force, so we have to do it uh, cross bite posteriorly if it needs. Single implant is much uh, better and uh, it's uh, much easier from the uh, all the type uh, before. Uh, it can be anterior or lateral uh, guidance with the natural uh, dentition. Uh, so in light force, it's, uh, the implant has no contact in the light force uh, of uh, patient, has no contact. And at heavy force, the implant has a light contact. So in light force, no contact in heavy force. It has the implant has a light contact. Also the same flat cusp area and increase proximal contact. Uh, in poor bone quality, if we have a, a poor bone, uh, that I mean, if we have uh, a graft, so uh, we have uh, to increase the healing time. If you have a graft or you have uh, a bone of uh, deform or uh, some poor quality of the bone. So you have to uh, increase the healing time and uh, make it as a progressive loading. This is uh, another uh, type of uh, explaining to the same 
the, as I explained before. If we have implant occlusion, we have increased support and improved for direction and reduce for magnification. What I mean? Support. One quantity, we have the implant number, diameter, length, and surface area. That means when we have aggressive uh, a float or excessive uh, uh, implant uh, in, in, in the bone to increase the surface area and has a rough surface to increase the bone contact with the implant. Of the uh, four we have the occlusal morphology, that means flat central fossa and cusp inclination also uh, decrease the cusp inclination and decrease, decrease the occlusal table. Along the implant axis, it must be the force in the compressive direction and uh, centered contact. In, in uh, the last uh, point, which is mean reduce the force di uh, magn magnification, that's I mean the implant position in occlusal contact and distribution of the force. This is, uh, can be a type of uh, processes by decrease the length of cantilever or uh, not use the cantilever if we can. And in some time we can uh, do it by a cross bite also we can sharing the force by splitting of the implant with each other. Force direction. About the force direction in the teeth design. The teeth design normally uh, has uh, root, the root is uh, perpendicular to the curve of SPO. That means you have uh, contact during mastication that lead to force in a long axis uh, or perpendicular to the long axis of the root. That, uh, uh, teeth in 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 normal uh, point in every direction of the force, while the implant design for a long axis uh, load, generating less overall stress, increase the proportion of compressive stress compared to the angle force. Finite uh, finite element, uh, finite element in uh, analysis is uh, designed to study the region of the implant. The study. Uh, which we do it in, in implant or in occlusion uh, exactly, has uh, no exact uh, point or exact numbers because we have no, uh, no idea to, to, to inform the occlusion uh, force and occlusion direction in mastication of the patient naturally. But we have uh, many study uh, on uh, monkeys and in some uh, uh, animals uh, to uh, to has uh, some type of, of uh, comparison with the uh, force uh, suggested by the mastication of the natural patient. So we use the finite element to design the, uh, the occlusal force. So uh, the cantilever in general, I uh, will explain um, some of uh, people say that uh, they don't have uh, this slide. So, um, in general, must decrease the cantilever. The, uh, if we have a force on a lateral uh, border of the bridge, in this bridge, uh, for example, we have a bridge of uh, 20 millimeter in, in length. Uh, if we have a force on in the lateral border, C multiplied by uh, two on the other side of the bridge. So the force on the another implant, which is uh, the implant near the teeth, it will be uh, 50. If we have a put a compressive force on, lat on lateral side by 25, on the other side, it will be 50. So it will multiply by two. And also the uh, implant in the center of the uh, in between of them, the implant will be have a, a fulcrum force, uh, fulcrum force by uh, 75. This is the difference of the force. The force on the uh, lateral side, it will be tensile, 
and the force on the uh, in between for uh, in between implant it will be uh, follicular force so we must decrease the cantilever as much as possible and when we have a cantilever it uh, can be on a lateral incisor an edential of patient if we have uh, a decrease or severe bone resorption that uh, decrease the uh, vertical uh, of the bone uh, that mean you have to uh, get a lateralization of the nerve which is a difficult procedure for um, much of the patient and much of the dentist also so if we have uh, a decrease the vertical direction uh, above the inferior velar canal we can put it in loss or in complete of uh, mandible mandible of the patient also uh, we have to uh, discuss the crown height the crown height normally in in uh, compressive force or if the force in the long axis of the of the implant it is normal not uh, important about the magnification of the force because it is the same force uh, transmitted to the implant but if we uh, have a lateral force and we have a long uh, abutment or uh, crown height it will uh, magnify the uh, the force that mean it, it will be vertical cantilever that's what i mean it will be vertical cantilever that lead to uh, magnify the force on the uh, in the abutment i don't know okay sorry so uh, if we have a force uh, on uh, a crown height that uh, has angle of uh, 12 as i uh, explained in in the uh, case before so it will reach to uh, 350 so the uh, crown height if uh, it is uh, an increase it will be magnified the follicular force on the implant to give us the uh, some information about the the research in our research in, in occlusion we have many problems um, here i i uh, put uh, explaining of my of my problem of, of our problem uh, here we have uh, 607 paper uh, we have uh, no not revealed about the randomized controlled clinical study all the study have some limitation some uh, bias or some uh, decrease in the uh, in the uh, accuracy of the uh, of the study why because um, the most clinical study have a few patients in 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 human we have uh, a few patients and a small frequency of failure implant so the the failure implant we cannot study what the exact cause of of the of this failure and also we have uh, a few patients of, of failure so we cannot study uh, about two or three or six implant and can uh, explain uh, a study as uh, in general it is different and and the uh, sample uh, type uh, is uh, small in compared with another study also we have uh, a relatively a small number of experimental uh, study in animal so it may give uh, some what uh, to draw a definitive definitive occlusion uh, also, uh, a diffi uh, difficult clinical, uh, clinically to quantify the magnitude of direction of natural uh, uh, force during mastication. We cannot, we cannot uh, reach the exact number of force during mastication. The patient uh, uses a many force in, in mastication, and we cannot uh, transform this uh, force exactly to, to our uh, virtual uh, cast so this is uh, some limitation of the um, study of our study in about uh, the occlusion also uh, this to uh, correlation between the occlusal force and implant failure in, in implant failure we have many 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 uh, cause of failure 
some of them plug uh, plug uh, 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 and also we have the cement and we have a roughness we have oral hygiene we have patient we have a dentist we have many problems we have bone quality we have the uh, gingival uh, coverage uh, etc the cause of failure that uh, i mean in tutorial failure of the implant so we cannot exactly say that the failure of this implant is by the overloading or by force that's what i mean so we have many limitation in our study we collect uh, 607 paper uh, in the pubmed uh, all of them we have a small sample and we have uh, many bios and we have many uh, limitation of the study but generally uh, we have um, experimental study shown excessive occlusion load cause uh, complete loss of host integration only one in one uh, animal uh, experimental study we have complete loss of uh, osteo integration uh, all the other study have uh, the overload cause uh, maybe decrease the uh, bone or uh, causes uh, some bone resorption in, in uh, many cases also in another uh, associated with loss of uh, as I say, cannot be uh, firm about the causative factor of this failure of the implant. So, a 14 study were included in, in a review. Uh, 11 of uh, this uh, study were uh, animal experimental study, and uh, the other is a human cases or case report. This is the uh, uh, I put it in, in, in the end of the slide to uh, check it if you want. So, in animal study, a complete loss of host integration or, or uh, marginal bone loss has been shown in a few uh, animal study in, uh, in the result. Consistently show that functional load increases remodeling activity around the implant which can increase bone density. In another study, uh, this is the difference between the two study. Uh, in in, in uh, many study, we have uh, a bone loss around the crystal bone, uh, bone loss around the implant. While in another study, when we put uh, a gradual uh, force on the implant, the remodeling of the bone increase the, uh, the quantity of the bone that means we have a remodeling and we have uh, a good bone by the time we have uh, increased the uh, osteocyte and increase the, uh, the uh, change in the bone from d4 to d3 to d and d2 etc so increase the laminated bone and uh, increase the uh, bone with uh, a progressive force uh, applied on the implant he repeatedly shown marginal bone loss, the lack of osteointegration integration or around the implant, and uh, when whenever we increase the load uh, or close the load on the implant. However, this respective study and other factors can be considered. We cannot understand if this uh, bone loss uh, only from the occlusal load or maybe multifactorial. The bone loss can be from the plug. But here, as a periodontist, I, I will explain uh, in, in uh, two uh, concepts. We have in, in periodontal uh, study, we have a uh, uh, Linda concept and Weirhawk. Uh, as Linda say, the plug is the main cause of the periodontitis. In Weirhawk concept, he say that the bacteria of the uh, plaque is a causative factor of the periodontitis or gingivitis before. Uh, so in periodontitis, the main cause is the bacteria, but the occlusal force can 
uh, spread the bacteria in a different direction. That I mean when the tooth or the implant suggested to overload force can spread the bacteria in a deeper point from that the bacteria alone can reach it. That means the bundles, if without overload, it will be about, let's say, one millimeter. But when we have an overload, the uh, bone loss may be increased to three millimeter. So the overload of the force can increase the, uh, the, uh, the loss of uh, bone or loss of uh, stability of the implant. So what is the effect of uh, the overloading? As we see in, in this uh, donkey, we have uh, an overload can loss the, the force of the, of, the, of the animal, generally. So we use uh, six monkey and uh, put in each of them a prosthesis delivered in, in super occlusion and uh, display the mandible to get in lateral direction. About the six implant in occlusion, occlusal overload, we have two of them loss of force integration, general, uh, all of them. And uh, two of also integrated in, in apical part only, the two of implant uh, completely lost, two of uh, implant uh, just uh, put in, in apical parts only, the force integration. Uh, remain in an apical part only, and uh, another implant has uh, a bone loss about one millimeter or two millimeter. All of them has uh, a bone loss. Uh, two of them uh, completely, two of them uh, more than two thirds, and two of them has uh, a minimum or minimal uh, bone loss. It's about two millimeter. Uh, the, uh, here we can uh, explain the loading protocol. The loading protocol in immediate, uh, we have immediate, uh, immediate restoration, which I mean immediate provisional restoration, and immediate loading, uh, early loading, conventional loading, and delay loading. In the immediate loading, immediate uh, provisional, it's uh, loading of uh, provisional, uh, putting the temporary uh, crown about uh, not more than uh, 48 hours and about the immediate loading uh, putting the final restoration or final prosthesis also in in 48 hours and the early loading we use the uh, restoration of the loading less than three months every loading before the three months it can uh, it's called uh, early loading the conventional loading about three to six months and delay loading that uh, more than this uh, period. Um, okay, about immediate or immediate uh, provisional. Uh, primary clinical stability of the implant. The most important point, uh, if we have a provisional uh, abutment, must you have the, your implant must be uh, about uh, 35 uh, newton in in, uh, in the ratchet so uh, in this point you can put a provisional if your implant is not uh, 35 uh, torque so i don't uh, accept or, or Maybe I am winning you from put the provisional. Also, uh, the implant must be uh, splitting uh, about the provisional or about the final process must be splitting. All the implants must be splitting. I think I have a problem or not. I think I am okay. Yes. Okay. Adequate implant splitting is must be uh, whenever you have to put a provisional or final prosthesis. Uh, also, uh, we have to uh, put the provisional uh, out of occlusion, completely out of occlusion, 
even in heavy falls, it's out of occlusion. Um, and uh, a most important point, you must uh, prevent to remove the, the provisional restoration during the healing period. If you put a healing restoration on implant for three to six months, you don't remove this provisional restoration in this period from three to six uh, months because uh, when you put the when you remove the um, provisional restoration you may uh, loss the also integrated bone in this period because you understand that the primary stability at the first high and then decrease to minimum then will start quality so if you remove the provisional uh, restoration in this period you have uh, maybe to lose your implant the risk factor of, of uh, immediate loading uh, if the patient have uh, a high masticatory or power function habit i don't uh, promise you not to lose your uh, prosthesis or you're not uh, lost your implant so the patient of high mastication and patient with power functional habit you have to uh, not put any provisional or final prosthesis immediately. You have to wait for that time. Also, if you have a poor bone quality, that means if you have uh, no, of, of, uh, no torque uh, in, in your putting your implant. If your implant uh, torque not reach to 35, I don't promise you to put the provisional or temporary abutment. So you have to uh, close it. Even if, if in this uh, point, I, I uh, not accept the uh, single stage surgery. I don't uh, want to put anything on the implant. Just put a cover screw and uh, covered by, by the gingiva. If you have um, a good bone quality, if you have normal patient, good oral hygiene, you can put uh, a provisional abutment. In temporary consideration, no occlusal contact, uh, even in maximum uh, intercuspation, and removal of all excessive contact from provisional restoration, uh, limiting the effect of cantilever or not use the cantilever whenever you can. Uh, and also, you have to supplant the implant whenever you possible. That. So, the uh, overloading factor that uh, the, uh, overloading uh, first of all the large cantilever also we have the power functional uh, force and uh, improper occlusal scheme or when we have a, a, a lateral force power functional force and a premature contact when we have uh, uh, implant in, in contact and the other bridge is not in contact, the load uh, concentrated on this implant and the other bridge uh, not distribute the implant uh, exactly between the, uh, all the implants. Uh, also, we have uh, a point of, of overloading. Uh, I mentioned it in uh, first slide or second slide. Uh, in, in implant, uh, when uh, we have uh, a complete or uh, full arch, I mean, uh, the implant has no receptor. So the patient cannot uh, understand the force. Yeah, that means um, the force on the implant cannot has uh, a tactile not a tight sensation. So the patient uh, may get a force four times than the natural teeth uh, in, in his natural teeth. When we have a natural teeth, he has a tactile sensation. This tactile sensation uh, has a, a pulse or uh, have uh, uh, informed the, the brain and the brain uh, give to decrease the force by the muscle on the arch. But in implant, we have no sensation. So the patient can put uh, a force maybe four times more than the natural teeth 
when we have a natural teeth. This is um, also an uh, important point in, in our occlusion in implant. So, how we can prevent the uh, occlusal overload? First of all, we have even distribution of occlusal contact. I think I am okay. Okay. Uh, even distribution of occlusal uh, contact avoid the interference of occlusion. Uh, the number of the implant must be significantly uh, be okay uh, because um, some study of Palomalo about the all in form and sometimes um, naturally I am uh, not with all in form in general. In, in, sim in simple case or in some case I, I okay accept it. But uh, generally I uh, go with uh, all in six. Uh, it's better and has a more uh, time for uh, withstanding of the force. Also, in a poor quality of the bone, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have to expect a more overloading because the bone uh, has no support for the implant. So we can uh, increase the healing time. The um, healing time, which is three to six months, we can increase if we have a poor quality of the bone. So uh, we can get the progressive uh, force. So we have uh, a good bone when we put the force on it. Also, we can uh, increase the force progressively, not suddenly increase the force or suddenly uh, put the force all on the implant. So you can use uh, maybe uh, a provisional uh, uh, prosthesis for uh, a time, and then you can replace it with the final restoration after maybe six months. Also, we have a crucial adjustment for the treatment of overloading you can uh, decrease the height of the cusp and uh, decrease the inclination of the force. So uh, you can, in, in this uh, point, you can decrease the lateral force and decrease the overloading of the uh, occlusion. Okay. In occlusal uh, adjustment, uh, we have, uh, why we have to increase the uh, primary contact or primary point that, uh, that here, uh, put it in, in natural teeth, uh, it's normal here. But in implant, when we have these points uh, or this uh, blue colored on the prosthesis, uh, we have to remove it in light force. Why? Because over time, the, the teeth change the position it will uh, change their position or can be introduced intrude in the bone to uh, withstand the forces that it applied by the mastication while the implant cannot be uh, intrude in the bone so in light force we have uh, no contact between the processes of the implant while the teeth should be in contact in light force in heavy force the implant should be in light contact. You have to uh, do a selective grinding or adjustment of the cusp in uh, processes when uh, we have these uh, points. Also, uh, the implant has uh, no weaving. The porcelain has no weaving, while the enamel has weaving. With time, the teeth will get uh, enamel weaving while in, in uh, porcelain, there is no weaving. We have a porcelain chipping or a fracture of uh, porcelain if we have PFM. So uh, we have periodic adjustment of the processes, not the first time only. Uh, do uh, a selective grinding or adjustment of the processes after one year and maybe after two years or, or more because uh, after time, the uh, occlusion will be changed. A paroxysm. Patient with a paroxysm, many of dentists say we cannot uh, do implant for patient has a paroxysm. Or in, 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 in past, they say 
that uh, paroxysm contraindicated for implant. No, that's not true. The paroxysm can be treated with implant, but with some precaution. So in a paroxysm, we have uh, a multifactorial origin, so you cannot treat the paroxysm in, in general, but you have to withstand the, the force or the excessive force of the patient during mastication and also at the night. Many of uh, patient has uh, force at the night, so you have to withstand of uh, this force. Uh, so if uh, the risk, uh, before you can treat the patient, you have to inform the patient uh, with a paroxysm, when, it, when you diagnose the patient and you see the patient is paroxysm, so you have to inform him or her that the uh, risk of uh, failure or risk of destruction uh, on the implant processes, it will be more than the other patient or the normal patient. So uh, the patient will be informed before you treat that he cannot uh, say why I am failure and my friend is better than you. So before you can treat the patient, you must inform him that you have a paroxysm. So the percentage of failure or the percentage of a problem with you is more than the other patient. And uh, in pair, impartially identical patient, so uh, you can use uh, a night guard to relieve the force. And uh, after you get the night guard for uh, a time, uh, you can uh, put the implant in the uh, new position of the occlusion uh, to uh, treat him. Uh, in pa posterior mandible, uh, you must have uh, out of occlusion. The, the prosthesis must be out of occlusion about the cantilever and only in the mandible. You cannot use the uh, uh, cantilever on the upper arch in, in this patient. You have to put implant posteriorly for the upper arch. But in, in lower arch, you can use cantilever without occlusion. You put the occlusion in the anteriorly. And uh, you can use a soft uh, reline. Uh, reline material can put it on uh, implant crown as a stress breaker or stress relief element uh, for a time and he will uh, get a more uh, uh, better occlusion with time. So one of uh, type of uh, night guard, this is the Biostar, can do it uh, in the clinic or in, in your technician can uh, put it in the night guard. Uh, this is uh, night guard can decrease the uh, percentage of force on the teeth with time and uh, also the patient must have a psychiatric cause uh, about the paroxysm so uh, you can uh, consult with uh, his physician or psychiatric about the problem of uh, his life. Then we have another problem with tongue thrust. Tongue thrust also a problem some somewhat it's uh, less than uh, uh, from the paroxysm, but also the patient with tongue thrust has a lateral force. Uh, so the uh, uh, patient with uh, tongue thrust has a natural force on the tongue against the teeth during the swallowing. So the patient uh, normally put his tongue on the top of the mouth, or I mean in the palate, when he is swallowing. But some patient has a bad habit or has a habit from their childness uh, to put his tongue in between the teeth, as the picture here, during swallowing. This is leading to uh, open bite in, in natural teeth and leading to, per, to, to protrusion of the teeth in uh, in uh, natural teeth, I mean, but in, in our implant, it will go the lateral force on the implant. It's lesser in intensity, uh, uh, 
from the other uh, type of force, but also it is a force which is uh, uh, which is considered as a parafunctional force, and it can increase the uh, situation on the side of implant. Uh, this patient has uh, anterior uh, tangus thrust. Uh, okay, uh, and also in this patient or any patient has a, a parafunctional force, it uh, contraindicated or it is a critical about one stage uh, implant. So in this patient, you uh, don't put the implant in, uh, you don't put the implant in, in single stage. You have to cover it with cover screw and cover it with the normal gingiva. Then after three months or more, uh, you go to second stage surgery. Also, we have a patient with a lateral tongue thrust. The uh, lateral it will affect on the posterior. So uh, this patient uh, uh, of posterior uh, tongue thrust, uh, they retract one cheek at time uh, away from posterior teeth. Uh, if you if you want to to uh, to diagnose this patient or to confirm uh, that the patient has a lateral tongue thrust or posterior tongue thrust, you retract the cheek and put a water by injection by a needle in his mouth and ask him to swallow, and you see the pulse of the patient on your uh, needle, or, or uh, sorry, on your um, mirror or your retractor. So if the patient put uh, a heavy force on your uh, retraction, that means he has uh, a lateral or posterior tongue thrust. And also the same problem here we have in posterior implant, he has uh, a lateral force on the implant. At the end of my lecture, a treatment of malpositioned implant or uh, occlusal uh, complication. Uh, Sometimes you have to treat a patient with um, unfavorable implant. Patient uh, send it from uh, many dentists and he wants to complete the processes, but uh, actually uh, some of them they cannot be uh, completed. Uh, if the patient has um, lack of bone uh, for implant placement or unwilling to undergo augmentation procedure, uh, inadequate diagnosis of or treatment plan from the dentist. So this is the result. This is a problem. Uh, the first of, of them has aesthetic complication and uh, also has uh, a complication about the uh, vertical cantilever here in the this central uh, in the other case we have uh, a position of the implant which is in between no lateral no central i cannot understand what the patient what the dentist uh, treatment plan but i think uh, he can put two implants to treat this case also uh, mechanical position of malpole uh, we have a ceramic fracture or secure losing in the posterior area, or maybe uh, implant fracture. Uh, I have a patient from uh, a six year, uh, put him in all in four in upper uh, uh, full arch. Uh, he come to me after six year. He has a fracture of the four implant, four fixture fracture. So I don't understand the problem but I think there is a heavy lateral force on the fixture that caused this um, crisis. Uh, I, I think it's a crisis. Now we um, explain the difference between secure retained and uh, cemented uh, ecran. Every study, every article say that uh, uh, secure retained is better than the uh, cemented type, but here in, in, in occlusion, I, I think in, I'm not uh, talking about the peripheral implantitis. I, I am talking about the uh, occlusion or uh, the loading, overloading. 
the cemented type is better than the secure. Again, I am talking on occlusion. The cemented type is better than the uh, occlusal, than the secure retain. Why? Because the uh, cemented type uh, has a more uniform uh, thickness of the crown, mostly, mostly, not, not uh, exactly, but uh, considerably. It's uh, a more uniform in the thickness of the uh, crown or the porcelain on the abutment, while in, in secure retain, we have, uh, as you will see in this picture, we have uh, a not uniform between the uh, porcelain on the crown. But if we have a custom abutment, this not at all. If we have a custom abutment and secure retain, it is better than the cemented type. Okay. <coughs> Uh, if we want to decrease the ceramic chipping or ceramic fracture, uh, you have to put the uh, ceramic uh, thickness is uniform uh, all uh, the point of the crown, and you can use a custom abutment uh, in in. Uh, security and or in cemented type, uh, no, no difference, but uh, I say the custom abutment has a uniform of ceramic thickness, so it is better in ceramic chipping. Splint or not splint, all the implant must be uh, split in. No evidence based, no scientific evidence, but uh, a clinician uh, in, in, in our uh, world, we have a better uh, distribution of the force when we splint the implant with each other. So the complicated is uh, decreased. Thank you.